I still know an old story about a boy and a girl who throughout their lives walked towards a single destination. How many of you can say the same about him or herself? About 300 years ago, there was a great emergency in Finland. The war raged throughout the country. Cities and houses were burned. Grain fields were trampled and people died by tens or hundreds of thousands of the sword, of hunger, of exile and of horrible diseases. Then were not seen or heard other things than sighs and tears, wailing, grief, ash and blood. And those in whom the hope was for the longest time did not at last know any more what they had to hope for. Because God's plague passed over our country, punishing it severely. That time's memories will never be forgotten. During this great disaster happened also that many families were broken, so that some were taken to the enemy's country, meaning Russia. Others fled to the forests and wildernesses or to the distant Sweden. A wife no longer knew anything about her husband, nor a brother about his sister, nor a father and a mother about their child, whether they were still alive or already dead. That was why, when the peace finally came and those who still lived returned home, few of them did not have to long and weep for their loved ones. As it is told in the fairy tale about Knight Bluebeard, Bluebeard's young wife, that he sent his sister to a tower from where one could see far into the road, and always at short intervals he kept asking her, Anna, my sister, do you see someone coming? In the same way many people asked each other when the cabin felt gloomy and the loved ones still had not come. Is not anyone seen coming? Is still no one seen coming? And usually it was answered, no one, no one. But sometimes it happened, as in the Bluebeard's fairy tale, that far from the road was seen a small dust cloud. It approached and at last were seen a group of refugees who were seeking their family members. From among them, <clears throat> the fathers and mothers' eyes sought their loved ones. And if they, after many, many years, found them, then was the joy so great as if there had been no sorrow, as if there had never been sorrow, the dwellings suddenly rose again, the fields again gave fruit, and in the place of past sorrows, a new time began. During this long war had, among other people, been taken two small siblings, a boy and a girl, far into a strange country, where they had ended up in the care of good people. The years went by, the siblings grew bigger. But although they suffered no lack, and although they had all things abundantly, they could not, however, forget their father, mother and native land. Their minds were like those of the Jews who had been taken to captivity in Babylon, who hung their zithers on willows, and they could not sing play or dance in a foreign country, because their heart was in Jerusalem. When a rumor then told that there was peace in Finland, and that all who wanted and could were allowed to return there, then the strange land became too stifling for the children, and they asked for permission to leave for home. The strangers, their caregivers, laughed and said, For home! Woe to you, uncomprehending children! Do you know how long the distance there is? Over 1,000 versts, or over 600 miles. We do not care about that, answered the children, as long as we get home. But you have a new home with us. Here there are clothes and foods abundant before you, good fruits for you to eat, milk for you to drink, warm clothes, funny dwellings, and friendly people who love you from their hearts. What more do you long for? Yes, so it is, said the children, but we want to go home. There is a great emergency and a lack of everything at your home. There you must live in great poverty with mosses as your bed, 
with spruce branches as your roof, with wind and frost as your constant companions, and the trees bark as your daily bread. Your parents, your brothers, your sisters, and all your friends have already died long ago. While seeking their traces, you will find only the traces of wolves who have passed by the snowdrift in that waste place where your cottage stood before. Yes, said the children, but we want to go home. But ten years have passed since you were taken from there. Then you were small and uncomprehending. The brother was five years old and the sister was four years old. Now you are fifteen and fourteen and you know the world little. All you have forgotten, the road there and even your parents and in the same way also your parents have forgotten you. Yes, said the children, but we want to go home. Who will show you the way there? God, said the boy. Besides, I remember that on my parents' manor grows a big birch, where beautiful birds sing at dawn. And I remember, said the girl, that a star gleams through the birch's leaves in the evening. Poor children, <clears throat> said the strange upbringers, your request is foolish and destructive, and they forbade the children to think of the matter any more. But the more they forbade, the more the children thought of the matter, and they did not do it out of disobedience, but because an irresistible desire to return to the homeland always smoldered in their minds. Finally, on a night of moon, when the boy could not, because of his thoughts, sleep at all, he asked his sister, Do you sleep? The sister replied, I cannot sleep. Our home is in my mind. It is also in my mind, said the boy. Come, let us tie our clothes together and flee from here. I feel as if God constantly whispered in my heart, Go home, go home. And what God says, it cannot be a sin. Yes, said the sister, and they quietly left for the journey. Outside a bright moon lit the paths, and the night was lovely. After a moment, said the girl, Do you know my brother? I am afraid that we will not find the way home. The brother answered, Let us always go toward the northwest, where at midsummer time we see the sunset. That way is our home. And let us consider as the sign that when we see on the yard the branch through whose leaves shines a bright star, then we have arrived home. A moment later said the sister again, Do you know, my brother, I fear that the beasts and thieves will do evil things to us. The brother assured her, God will protect us. Do you still remember the prayer that we learned at home already when we were small? No matter where I walk, as my refuge is the Lord's spirit. Yes, said the girl, God will send his angels to walk beside us in a strange country. <clears throat> Thus they now joyfully hastened forward. The boy cut for himself a sturdy staff out of an oak's branch to defend with it himself and his sister, but nothing evil happened to them. They walked ahead and the birds flew from branch to branch ahead of them so slowly that the children could easily follow them. The children ate the forest's fruits, drank the fountain's bright water, and rested their nights on soft polytrichums. Uh, they were amazed that they always got food, and where they stopped in the evening, they found a suitable sleeping place. This they could not understand, but each time while seeing the birds, they shouted, Look, God's angels are guiding us. Thus they walked long journeys forward. At last, the girl began to tire out, and she said to the boy, When can we start seeking our birch? He replied, Only when around us we hear people speak the language that our father and mother spoke. Again they walked a long distance to, towards the northwest. The summer started drawing to its end and the air in the forests became chilly. The girl asked, Is our birch still not seen? The boy answered, Not yet. The landscapes through which they walked now started to look different. Thus far they had walked through uh, wide plains but now they arrived to the lands where there were at times low hills, or in turns, low hills, mountains, streams, and great lakes. The girl said, How shall we cross the steep mountains? The boy replied, I shall carry you. And so he did. 
Again the girl asked, how shall we cross the swift rivers and wide straits of water? The boy said, by rowing, and he rowed across the lakes and streams, <clears throat> because whenever they came to the shore, there was a boat as if waiting for them. But the brother and the sister swam across a few streams, and lightly did they swim like ducks on the waves, because the angels flew in the shape of birds beside them, showing the way. Once they had walked for the entire day without resting for a single moment, and they were very tired. In the evening they arrived to a lonely house, which had just been built out of sturdy logs in the former manor's place. On the manor there was a small child peeling turnips. Would you not give us one turnip? asked the boy. Come to the cabin, said the child. Their mother will give you some food. Then the boy clapped his hands eagerly, <clears throat> hugged and kissed the child, weeping for joy. Why are you so happy, my brother? Why? asked the girl. Would I not rejoice? replied the boy. This child speaks our father's and mother's language. Now we can start seeking the birch and the star. <clears throat> they went to the cabin where they were kindly welcomed. The houses folk asked the children from where they came. The boy answered, We come from a foreign country and we are seeking our home, but we have no other signs than the birch growing on the manor where the birds sing at sunrise and through whose leaves a bright star twinkles in the evening. Poor children, said the people, feeling sad. In the world grow many thousand birches, and on the sky sun shine thousands of stars. How could it be possible that from among so many you would find exactly the ones that you are seeking? The boy and the girl answered, God does guide us. His angels have already escorted us long journeys into our own country. We are, after all, already half at home. Finland is big, said the cabin's inhabitants, shaking their head. But God is still bigger, replied the boy, and they thanked the house's people and left again for the journey. Now they no longer had to eat and lie in the forest, but they walked from house to house, and although there were wide wildernesses between the human dwellings, and there was a great poverty everywhere, they still always received a place to rest at night and some bread whenever they needed some, because everyone pitied them. But they did not find the birch and the star. From house to house they sought them, and they saw many birches and many stars, but not the ones that they longed for. Oh, sighed the girl, Finland is so big and we are so small, we will never find our home. But the boy rebuked her, saying, Do you believe in God? Yes, I do, said the girl. Then you also know, said the boy, that even greater miracles have happened. When the shepherds wandered at night to Bethlehem, a star moved ahead of them. It moves also ahead of us if we only believe. Yes, yes, said the girl, as was her habit always to say to her brother. <clears throat> and with happy minds they continued their journey. At last, after walking for over one year, they came on an evening to a lonely house. It was the Pentecost evening near the end of May, and the summer's first leaves were about to start sprouting. While coming to the manor, they saw there a great lush-topped birch, through whose small light green leaves shone a bright evening star in the evening twilight. The evenings were already so summer-like bright, that only this star, which is the biggest and brightest of all, was seen on the roof of sky. There is our birch! shouted the boy at once. There is our star! the girl said right after that. And embracing each other, they thanked God and wept, tears of joy. Here is the stable where the father always took his horses, said the boy thoughtfully. And I know the well from which the mother gave drink to the cows, said the girl. Here are two small crosses at the birch's foot. What might they mean? wondered the boy. I am afraid of going to the cabin, said the girl. What if the father and mother no longer are alive or no longer know us? Please go ahead of me, my brother. Let us listen first behind the door, said the boy with a quickly beating heart. In the cabin sat an old man with his wife. They were not actually old, but the sorrows and griefs had already, earlier than normally, ground lines on their foreheads. 
The man said to his wife, Now it is Pentecost when God sent the Comforter to the sad hearts, but no comfort comes to us. All of our four children are gone. Two rest under the birch, two were taken to the enemy's country, from which they will surely never return to us. It is heavy to live alone in one's old age. The wife said, Is God not the Almighty and eternally good? He who led the children of Israel from captivity can give also us back our children, if he sees that it is right. How old would now our youngest children be if they were still alive? The father said, The boy would be sixteen and the girl would be fifteen. But we have not des deserved such a great blessing of the Lord that we would receive our dear children back. While he was still speaking, the door opened, and into the cabin stepped the boy and the girl who said that they had come from afar, and they asked for a piece of bread. Come closer, children, said the father, and stay at home, at our home for the night. So big would also our youngest children be if they still lived and were with us. Behold, said the wife, so lovely two children, oh so beautiful would also our children be if they lived and were here. And both parents wept bitterly. Then the children could no longer hide themselves, but they hastened with teary eyes to embrace the father and mother, shouting, Do you not know us? We are your dear children, and God has miraculously guided us back to you from the strange country. And the parents embraced them with an unspeakable love, fell on their knees with their children, and thanked God, who precisely on the eve of Pentecost had granted to all of them such a great comfort. Then the children had to tell all stages of their lives, and the parents did the same. And although each one of them had had to taste much sorrow, it was now totally forgot and changed into joy. The father felt the boy's arms and was pleased when he noticed that they were sinewy and strong. And the mother caressed her daughter's dark hair, kissing hundreds of times her rosy cheeks. I already felt that something good would happen, said the mother, full of childlike joy, when two strange birds sang today so happily in the birch. Those birds I do know, said the girl. They were two angels in the shape of a bird, who have flown all the way ahead of us, guiding our way, and now they rejoice with us when we have found our home. Come once more to greet the birch and the star, said the boy. You see, my sister, under it rest our small sisters. If we rested there under the green tussock, and our sisters stood here, in our place, and beheld our tomb, how would it be for us? Surely you would then be as God's angels in heaven, replied the mother tenderly. Now I know, said the girl, angels in the bird's shape, who have followed us all the way, and who have today in the birch predicted our homecoming, they were our small sisters who sleep in the tomb. They always whispered in our heart, Go home, go home, to comfort the mother and the uh, father. They in the wilderness showed us the way, so we would not starve to death, made a moss bed for us, so we would not freeze to death, and on the swift river's shores they sent us a boat, so we would not drown. They also said to us, There is the right birch, there is the right star, among the thousands because God had chosen them and sent them to protect us. Thank you, our sisters. Thank you, good God. Look, said the boy, how bright and up the heaven's tender star gleams through the birchy star uh, leaves. Now we have found our home. Now we will no longer strive to go further, my sister. Dear children, said the father, a person's life in the world is wandering towards the eternal destination. Wander further with God in your hearts, and the eternal destination always before your eyes. While the angels guided you, you walked steadily. Let them show you the way also in the future. You saw to the birch. It means your fatherland. Yes, let the fatherland be your works and love's destination for your entire lifetime. You saw to the star. It means eternal life. Let it be your light for your whole life. The children and the mother crossed their hands in prayer and said, Amen.
and let it happen.